Welcome to Geographical Analysis Lecture 20 on Area Pattern Analysis. The goal of Area Pattern Analysis is to analyze a choropleth map to determine if the pattern shows evidence of randomness, clustering, or uniformity. Here's an example of GDP per capita across the continent of Africa. Here, each country is a unit of observation, and that country is being represented by a polygon on this map. When we color the polygons in this way, uh, th where the colored is depicting a certain numerical value, we call this a choropleth map. And the question is, do we see a spatial pattern in the, val in the values of GDP across the continent? In particular, do the values look randomly distributed over space? Or does it appear that there might be some clustering on this map? To my eye, I definitely see some clustering. I see high values of GDP over here in these countries across the north. I see high values down here in the south. And then there's some pockets over here of most, you know, not quite as strong, but definitely some mixture between high and low. And then we see big swaths of land that are predominantly low values of GDP. Now, these patterns, if they really do exist, indicate some sort of social or economic processes that are causing the values of GDP to arrange themselves in this way. So in this case, what might those processes be? Well, first of all, we have some, uh, some effects of absolute location on GDP. So for example, countries that are, at, uh, that are located along well-established trading routes. So for example, South Africa, which has historical uh, uh, trading dominance over ships that had to round the, the, the Cape, um, they, those countries could develop faster and uh, therefore now have higher GDP. Similarly, countries that could establish Mediterranean ports also have higher values of GDP. Uh, alternatively, absolute location might cause lower values of GDP. So we have countries that are more or less coincident with the Sahara Desert, very low levels of resources, natural resources, and we see that these places have low levels of GDP. So these are examples of absolute, uh, what we call first order spatial effects. First order because it has to do with the um, absolute location of the countries on the Earth's globe. But what about second order effects? Effects that have to do with relationships between the countries. So an example of this is that countries that are located closer to more developed countries, so for example, uh, Botswana, Angola, countries in the south of Africa, were able to develop economically at a faster rate because they were able to trade with with their neighbors. And their neighbors in this case uh, uh, in South Africa were a uh, more developed country and that trade has some sort of spillover effects. And here we see that the fact that South Africa is high similarly might be causing some of these neighboring countries to have high GDP as well. And that's an example of a second order effect. So with aerial pattern analysis, we're going to be looking for statistical evidence that these types of processes exist. It's not enough just to look at it with our eyes and say, oh, we think there's a pattern. Let's use mathematics, let's use the rules of probability and statistics to tell us that, that if there is no pattern, if there is no process, what we want to be able to do is say, if there's no actual process that's causing GDP patterns to look this way, then the probability of obtaining such a highly clustered pattern with high values in one location and low values in another location, the probability of having this pattern, if there is no process causing this pattern, is so small that we're going to reject the null hypothesis that there is no process and instead adopt the alternative hypothesis that there are some processes, some geographic processes, causing these spatial patterns to exist. Here's another example, this time looking at obesity across the country. So here we have high obesity indicated uh, 
by darker red colors and low obes obesity with paler colors, uh, especially, you know, going to the greens uh, in, in super low obesity states. And what do you think? Does this look like a random pattern to you? It doesn't to me. It looks to me like we have a cluster over here of kind of low, low obesity uh, states. We have a strong clustering of high obesity states over here. And then we have some middle obesity states elsewhere. Okay, so clearly to me it looks like these colors have some kind of spatial organization. What about looking at uh, religious beliefs? Here we have a choropleth map showing county by county the percentage of the population that's LDS. This is from the year 2000. So what do you think? Do we see some sort of spatial pattern over here? This is a very strong uh, indication of, of clustering where we have all of the high-valued LDS counties more or less over here centered around Utah and then elsewhere we basically have low values uh, uh, everywhere else. 